And I want to say, the, explain the reason why I would like you to uh, do assignments following my way of outlines for sermons. First, God motivates us with His grace to obey Him. That is clear from the Old Testament and New Testament. So we see in the Old Testament that uh, we see that uh, there, may, there are many people who respond and say, well, God is gracious to forgive and to bless us. And uh, He is full of grace and mercy. And His mercy uh, stands forever. And then in the New Testament, we see that um, Jesus motivates His disciples by telling them all kinds of promises that how He promised them um, uh, blessings and grace and strength and authority and power and uh, and rewards. So all these are motivation by God's grace. Now the fact is many people are not uh, following the Bible to motivate people with God's grace. Many people um, uh, would just follow, uh, use the law and tell people you have to do this, you have to do that. Now it's not wrong to say that. But if that is the only thing they do without motivating them with God's grace, then, then uh, the motivation will be weak. And then some people, after a while, they lose the motivation. They lose the motivation because they say, um, you know, it's, it's just a lot of work. Believing in Jesus, after that I have to do all these things. It's a lot of work. But when people know that God is very happy with them, when they trust in Him, when we, when we uh, follow Him and obey Him and serve Him, He's very happy and will bless our whole life and will give us strength and help us uh, through the process and He will reward us. That will motivate people to, uh, to serve God and love God. Like now, I don't want to stop serving God because I know all these things, God is very happy with what I'm doing, that I'm very happy to serve Him. I'm happy to continue to serve until I cannot move. So. I have that strong motivation because I know that God will respond and help me and He is very happy with me. So that's motivation by grace. Now if some people are just motivated by, by, uh, by the law, then they just say, I have to do this. I have to serve God. I have to do this. I have to obey. And then sometimes they have a, a heart of rebellion. They say, I don't want to obey anymore. I don't want to serve and work so hard. So if it's just by the law, then people are under pressure or they serve like a slave. They have to, you know, work hard and work hard. Okay, and then point two here, God also reminds us and warns us when we disobey Him now. So we have God's grace and also His law. We have both. I'm saying we have a balance of both. I'm not saying we just have grace and don't have law. Uh, we have God's grace and the law. So God reminds us and warns us when we disobey Him. But the warning should not be the main motivation as shown in the Bible. For example, when the disciples followed Jesus, Jesus most, mostly motivated them with His promises and did not give them warnings as much. Jesus did not give them warnings all the time, but He gave them a lot of promises. Now He did give them warnings, but he gave more motivation, more grace than warning. And, uh, and the Bible also says very clearly that we are children of God, that, that Jesus calls us His friends when we obey Him, uh, that, we, that He motivates us with that grace, with that love. Okay, and then we also want our sermons to follow a clear direction and not to wander in different directions. That is why we need an outline with a clear direction. Because, you know, sometimes when people don't have an outline, they will just wander here and there, and then the sermon doesn't have a clear direction. We want to have a clear direction. That's why it's good practice to have an outline. Now, some people say they want to preach uh, freely as guided by the Holy Spirit. Now, we can still preach freely when we have an outline. When we have an outline, we can express our, our emotions, we can express our heart uh, for God, we can express how much we love God and we want to serve Him. So we can still uh, follow the moving of the Holy Spirit. Now, if 
the Holy Spirit guides us not to follow the outline is fine. But uh, when we start, we should. And when we start, we should um, work on having outlines that we get used to following a clear direction. That way, uh, the sermon will not be straying from one side to another. Okay? And then, it's very important, the most important thing is that we as pastors are enjoying God's grace and are motivated by God's grace in our whole life before we can motivate people with God's grace. So, it's very important that we are motivated by God's grace. We are enjoying God. We are we are uh, motivated by God's grace. We enjoy God. We enjoy God's uh, giving us the life of God. We enjoy serving God. We enjoy praying to God. We enjoy helping people. So we enjoy God and serving Him. Then we motivate other people. Now, even some pastors might be motivated by the law. They say, I have to do this. I have to help. I have to make the church grow uh, so that I can have more money. So they depend on the people for money. Instead, we should say, I'm pleasing God. Now, it doesn't mean we don't uh, work hard to serve God. I work very hard from morning to night. I will be working whenever I have time, uh, except for the time I spend time uh, with my wife and praying to God. And other than that, uh, that I spend a lot of time writing from morning to night that I keep writing, I want to uh, help more people to follow God, and I have a strong motivation. So living under grace doesn't mean that we, uh, we have no motivation, we, we don't work hard. We, I do work hard, so at the same time, I enjoy God. And then when I enjoy God, whatever I say will motivate people. And five, my goal is that you learn how to motivate people with God's grace and have a clear direction in the sermon for now. So for now, I'd like you to uh, learn to motivate people with God's grace and have a clear direction in the sermon for now. After you learn how to do this well, and then you can have much freedom in your sermons, but still keep the balance of grace and law. So after this learning process of being able to write sermon outlines with uh, m motivation, uh, uh, by the grace of God and also reminder and warning from God's law and have a clear direction after we work on this for a while then any time we talk or preach then we'll be talking about God's grace even though the sermon if it doesn't have this kind of outline you can have different outlines I you know I have preached sermons with different outlines. This is just a suggested outline for now, for the, for the beginning, so that you will follow an outline and also to motivate people with God's grace. And also, the different parts of this outline has the benefit. The benefit of, um, of changing people. Okay, so let's look at these um, points. Each point of the outline has a reason. First, there is a negative and positive examples of people to let people know the specific problems of Christians. For instance, if I preach about uh, to, love, uh, to love people, then I can talk about the negative examples of people that even though Christians know that we should love, but there are many Christians who don't love other people. They, are just, they don't care about the newcomers. They don't care about the people outside of the church. Uh, so that is a negative example to let people know, yes, it's true that not every Christian obey God. And this gives uh, people a very bad impression of Christians if we don't love other people, if we don't care about other people. So the negative examples and positive examples are like a uh, uh, Letting people know there is a problem, that people are not necessarily following God's teaching in this area. And then God's nature and grace, to guide people to appreciate and delight in God and be motivated by grace. So we have uh, this clear outline that first let them know there are problems of Christians. And then God's nature and His grace is so wonderful to 
attract us, to motivate us to follow Him and obey Him. So that is uh, the main motivation of Christians, God's nature and grace. So, and then it's related to that theme. If the theme is about joy, then we talk about God's nature of joy. God is a joyful God. Heaven is a joyful place. And His grace is that He gives us joy. Okay? So if it's related to evangelism, God has a heart of compassion on people. He wants to have compassion on people. He wants to save people. He sent His Son to die for us. And then He sent the Holy Spirit to move in our heart to draw us to Him. So if related to evangelism, then we talk about God's nature and grace related to evangelism. Okay, and then And then why people don't live out God's nature. So this is important too, the reason. Because we want to break the reason so that people will follow. So the reason why people don't live out God's nature, why people don't do evangelism, why people don't love other people, why, don't, why people don't have joy, why people don't have patience and kindness. Uh, so the reason, break down the reasons. Now, it's... Uh, depends on your experience. If you, if we have more experience in our Christian life and our, our counseling, helping people, then we have more experience to understand why people don't do it. And then reminder and warning. So this is from the law to warn people of the consequences of sin. If they don't live in joy, they lose the joy, and they have, they will live in sadness and depression, and they don't have strength. Now, if they don't live in love, then even if they do a lot of things for God, it's just like a, a sounding gong. It's, it's not going to benefit people. And if people don't do evangelism, so the warning that, that God is not pleased with us. So any, uh, when, whenever we disobey God, there are warning and consequences. And then how? So we want to tell people how we can change our our sinful way and then follow God's way in following this uh, this theme. If the theme is joy, how we can have joy, how we can put down depression and complain and then have joy. If this is about love, then we put uh, how we can put down our um, uh, lukewarmness, uh, our lack of care for people and how we can have more love for people. So whatever the theme is, each point is related to the theme. That's very important, that we don't stray away. It's very important when we preach, we don't stray away. Uh, first is the, so the negative and ne uh, positive example to let people know. Um, so each point of the outline has a reason, has a reason. Uh, so the negative, it's all related to the theme. The negative example of people, now if this is about uh, accepting other people, accepting other people, accepting other people, then a negative and positive example of people who don't accept other people, who don't, uh, who don't, uh, you know, who reject people, and positive example of how people accept other people. And then God's nature and grace that his nature is He accepts people, even sinners, and His grace to change the people. And then, why people don't live out uh, the nature of accepting other people? Because they are proud of themselves, they think that they are the best, uh, they, they are the best, and then other people are, are sinful, are not good enough, so they don't accept other people. And then, reminder and warning, if we don't accept people, God also will not accept us and how we can learn to accept people. So each of these is related to the theme. Okay, and then, so here I put down the, uh, the points we can have in a sermon. Sermon can include these points to motivate people. First, interpretation of the biblical passage, uh, that we want to explain the passage first, and then examples of negative and positive examples of people, and God's nature and grace uh, to motivate people, and then why people don't follow God's way. 
And then reminder and warning from the law, if people don't obey God, what will happen? And how we can live out this particular nature of God and challenge to people. And the two main parts, the two most important parts are number three and six. God's nature and grace to motivate people. And then how we live out this nature of God and how we obey God in this way. And then this is a secondary, the warning that we should have this warning so that people know that when they disobey God, there are uh, bad consequences. But the number three and number six are the two main parts, God's nature and grace, and then how we can live out God's nature and grace, okay? Now I'm going to use some sermon examples so that, uh, or before that, I want to talk about how we talk about God's nature and grace. Some people say, it's too hard. I don't know what to say. Now here I have four points under nature and grace. So these are four aspects that you can talk about. The first aspect is God's nature. Now I use an example of rejoice in the Lord. If the sermon is rejoice in the Lord, then the nature, so what nature God has, has to have in order to be able to give us the blessing. For instance, here, rejoice in the Lord. God is a joyful God. And His nature, He has this ability. Nature includes His, his internal nature and His ability, His wisdom, His power. So His inner quality. God has a joyful quality and also He has the ability to pass His joy to people. He has ability to when people come to him, he can put joy into people's heart. So that is his ability. And then grace is what he does for us. That God can give joy to those who have a close, close relationship with him. And then grace of transference. That means God gives us the gift to teach people to have joy and pray for people to have joy. So his grace, I uh, divide into two aspects. First is, God can give joy to those who have a close relationship with Him. And then secondly, He can give us the ability or the gift to pass this joy to people, to teach people how to have joy, and also pray for people to have joy. So usually there are two areas. First is to teach people, and then also to pray for people, to guide people to pray, to receive the anointing of joy. So that's the grace of transference. We can tr transfer this gift of God, this grace of God to other people. And then reward. God rewards those who live in joy and help other people to have joy. So these are four angles we can look at nature and joy because we just look at the sermon outline and uh, that we have God's nature and grace here and then some people say it's very hard uh, to, to know what to talk about. And here I give you four points. And I hope you would um, remember these four points. Then for each topic, then you can think about it. Okay? Now, let me explain this again. For any, any theme we have, uh, the theme would include, for instance, uh, if it includes uh, forgive people, then what's God's nature? God's nature is He is a forgiving God. Even when people have offended Him so many times, even when people have sinned so many times, God still forgives us. He has a forgiving nature. When we repent of our sin and come to Him, for sure He will forgive us. So He has a forgiving heart. So that is His nature and He accepts sinners. He accepts us. And then he, he has the heart to treasure any repentant sinners. So these are his nature. And then his grace. He forgives us. He really does forgive us. And he forgives us totally as if we had not committed that sin. Now even though there are consequences of sin, there are consequences of sin, but he forgives us totally that we can come to him that we can have a full relationship with Him when we truly repent of our sin. So that is His grace. He forgives us and accepts us. And then the grace of transference here would be that we can f 
forgive other people, announce God's forgiveness to other people, and help them to repent and accept the forgiveness of God. So God can um, that give us this gift that we can transfer this forgiveness of God to other people. Okay, and then reward. When we <clears throat> repent of our sins, God for sure will forgive us. And then when we forgive other people, God for sure will forgive us. So any theme, we can have these four points in the nature and grace of God. Let me use another example. Now, if we have an example of evan uh, evangelism, first, the nature of God. He has compassion on people. He wants people to be saved. He wants people to enjoy Him. So He has this nature. And then His grace. He sent His Son to die for us. He sent the Holy Spirit to move in our heart to draw us to Him. He gave us the Holy Bible to teach us how to come to Him. So this is uh, His grace and He gives us salvation and heaven. And then grace of transference, we can bring this gospel to other people. He gives us the strength and the wisdom and the anointing to bring the gospel to other people. We can tell people about Jesus' salvation and then we can bring them to Jesus. And Jesus has promised Peter to be a fisher of men and we too can be fisher of men that that God can transfer his anointing and his ability his gifts to us that we can bless other people and then the reward when we do evangelism he will for sure be very happy with us and he will reward us let me so these are four points that you can remember how to talk about God's nature and grace now if we if I use another example that, um, for instance, example of um, that, uh, for instance, the message is about building up the church. Okay, we want to love the church, we want to build up the church. The nature of God, God treasures people in his heart. God treasures people, God treasures the church. The church is his, where the people of God are. So God treasures the church. God likes the church, God loves the church, and God has given authority to the church. So God, God has this nature of that He likes the church, He likes people, so He likes the church, He treasures the church. And the grace of God is that He forgives the sin of people so that they can become Christians and be, belong to the church, and He gives authority to the church to forgive and uh, to uh, bring the uh, salvation to more people. He gives gifts to the people in the church. He guides the direction of the church. So He will bless, you know, His grace is to bless people, bless the church. And then grace of transference that we as Christians, that get, God gives us the gift to build up the church. So God uses people to build up the church, that we have the gift to build up the church to do evangelism and train people. And then reward. When we love His church, He will bless us and reward us. And then, so when we know that God treasures the church, God works, uh, puts so much effort and blessings into the church, then therefore we should love the church. So that's how. So that motivates people to love the church.